When programming your Voyager, you may notice at times that sometimes saw cuts or tight cuts don't get applied. Did you know that you can add them in if needed to minimize your incremental routing? I'll lay all the parts out on my slab like I normally do. I usually start with the largest part first, and then I use Park Industries Join Common Line Cuts to lay out the rest of the parts, usually working from largest to smallest. And then we use Auto Toolpath to apply all our cuts. This is the only way to apply tight cuts, which we'll be able to identify with the symbol. And we also get a red line to show us what was not cut. Although in some cases, like the end of this backsplash, the red line may be misleading because a portion of this red line really did get cut. Let's take some measurements. I'm going to start at the end of the saw blade cut where it plunged for the tight cut. And then I'll choose the other end of the red line on the backsplash. And we can see this distance is a little over 5 and 3 quarter inches. If I take a similar measurement on the other piece from the end of the cut to the end of the part, this distance is also a little over five and three quarter inches. So really, most of the end of this backsplash does get cut. The red line doesn't display correctly when the cut goes across another part. There are also areas in this program where there was no cut applied at all. This usually happens on an inside corner with a short side. In order to get it to cut, I'll first remove the tool paths by using the undo feature in my auto toolpath. Now I'm going to create some extra geometry to cut so that I can get the toolpath to jump across and cut the inside corner. For the first example, I'll draw a rectangle that kind of fits in the area. And I'll use my join parts common line cuts so that the edge of my rectangle and the edge of my part align perfectly. The size of the rectangle or length of the edge is decided by the material thickness and the diameter of the blade and the safety distance. This value of one inch will keep the blade one inch away from running into the next part. If I were to measure the length of the line that displays what didn't get cut, it would be about one inch. I'll use a different method to get a rectangle on the other side. I believe it's easier and uses less steps to use the backsplash button. I'll leave 3 inches for the height and test it to see if that is sufficient. And now with longer edges in place, I'll reapply my tool paths to see if they're long enough to get cut. And now I see a saw blade cut on the edge of the new rectangle. And I can measure the distance like before if I wish to verify that my countertop got cut as well. Let's take a look at the other inside corner. As we can see here, the three inch backsplash was just enough to get a small cut applied. And if you'd like, you can measure to verify those cuts as well. Now that I have the extra tight cuts applied, I'll delete any geometry and tool paths that I don't need. I find it easiest to select these with the crossing window and then choosing to delete both the geometries and the toolpaths, leaving the one toolpath that I need. And I'll do the same on the other side. Here I'll only need to select the geometry and this one blade cut. I'll need to leave this one to cut the edge of my countertop. Now that these additional cuts are completed, Finish your program as you normally do. Extend the cuts to the border, change the order of the cuts, and send the G-code. And as always, thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thank you for watching. Now you know what I know. One more thing. Did you know 
that we have hundreds of resources available on our website for machine training and service. To find them, go to parkindustries.com. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thank <laughs> you.